What appears to be an exodus out of London that's affecting house prices. Is this a post-lockdown trend? It's partly think? a post-lockdown. It's partly just a cost of housing thing. Look, on average, a house in the UK, the average home in the UK, costs around eight to nine times the average annual income, right? Wow. When, when I bought my first property in the mid-90s, it was more like four or five times. Yeah. But that eight or nine times average multiple, it's something like 12 to 15 times yeah. in London. And for first-time buyers, look, over half of all first-time buyers in this country now, they can only buy their property because of the so-called bank of mum and dad. Yeah. And that's two-thirds in London and the southeast, which is deeply unfair because you get people from families that don't own property, mm. that are working just as hard, they're paying rent on someone else's mortgage, yeah. whereas people earning exactly the same, yeah. doing exactly the same job at work, they can buy their own house, so they're paying off their own mortgage. So what's happening at the moment is because this price differential between London and the rest of the country is made so much worse by rising interest rates, mm. then you're getting a lot of young people leaving London just to get anywhere on the housing ladder. Let's have, I've got a few numbers here for you, just because I think they're worth stressing every now and then. So... I'll just put it in here. Average two-year fixed-rate mortgage has risen from 2.52% to 6.85% since 2021. Look at those numbers. That's absolutely huge. And the increase in mortgage payments has been worse yeah. in London. So 30% of London, these are, these are figures from the, the estate agent Hamptons, 30% of London-based London -based first-time buyers are now leaving the capital. Mm -hmm. And that's up from just 12% wow. of London-based first-time buyers yeah. back in 2013. Yeah. And, of course, you know, we just saw a rate rise from 5 to 5.25%. I've been calling for rate rises to stop for months, as, as you guys know. But... I don't think they will stop. I think there'll be at least one, maybe two. Yeah. So this hollowing out of the capital is likely to continue. What's interesting about this is that the first-time buyers who can't afford to upgrade in London are, of course, moving out of town, but they're pushing up prices elsewhere. So mm. we've seen, like, in Bristol, it's now all London money going there. So these blooming Londoners, I they're know. going everywhere. And so I, I live in a market town which is, you know, an hour's commute from, from London. It's, it's half an hour on a fast yeah. train, 35 minutes. So it's... You know, it is very subject to London money and local kids who don't plan to live and work in London, yeah. whose families have been in this town, in this locality for years, they are getting squeezed out by London money as well. Yeah. It's and it's, me it's mental health, you know. Mm. I mean, how much time you're spending commuting. And this goes back to the Greenbelt. You know, the Greenbelt, in parts of the South East, yeah. the Greenbelt is like 20, 30 miles wide. So what people are having to do is they're having to commute over the Greenbelt, mm. right, which is more environmental cost, mm. more time, more stress, more family breakdown. Mm. It's crazy. And I wonder if um, a certain Mr Sadiq Khan has got anything to do with this. Um, we've got soaring knife crime, um, the streets feel less safe, 12 and a half quid yeah. to drive your car, motorists getting nailed to the floor. A lot of people just look at the cost-benefit analysis thinking, I'm not bothered about this anymore, I'm out of town. And also, I, I, I think there is that, rising crime, but crime always goes up. Or well, nearly always goes up when the cost of living goes up as well. When when times get tougher, yeah. crime tends to go up, particularly violent crime, unfortunately. But also, I think you're getting a lot of people, particularly a lot of Londoners, maybe if they're in, in flashy professional jobs, they're thinking, well, we can, you know, I only have to come in two days a week because yeah. I can yeah, work yeah. from home because I'm one of the laptop classes. Yeah, so yeah. London's going to end up being a place where it's really, really expensive to live. But also... You know, we need people in living in London that do the practical hands-on jobs that you can't do working from home. You know, if working in warehouses, you know, trades, building, all, all the rest of it. And, and, you know, anyone who lives in London will tell you it's so hard to get anyone to do any work, or any building work, yeah. any maintenance work at the moment, because mm. the people who, who would do those jobs, and they're completely decent the, the jobs that, that are needed, they can't afford to live in London.